In this video, Oscar and I are going to take a look inside the deluxe version of Brass Lancashire. <laughs> Chris Renshaw here with my buddy Oscar laying on the table and yes we are looking at the deluxe edition version of Brass Lancashire from Roxley Games. Um, if you know me then the idea of me looking at a brass game is probably like blowing your mind but if you also know anything about me then I love I am a judge of box by its cover. That's, you know, I'm a book by its cover kind of person because if your game looks ugly, why would I put it off the shelf? So if a game looks good, I can be fooled into potentially liking it even if it's not a game I would normally like. So thus we have the new versions of Brass, which I had been very interested in when I saw them because they look beautiful. But if you threw up the original version of Brass, uh-uh, that's some um, piece of crud. We're just gonna just gonna slide that out of there. Yeah, but new version of Brass, very interesting. Now, so I asked Roxley, because of this idea, I asked Roxley to send us a copy of Brass Lancashire. Did not expect them to send actually the deluxe. I thought it was just going to be the retail version, but I'm not gonna complain. So we are going to take a look and what's inside the deluxe box. Now, before we get into actually there, I got a beef right off the bat, and that is, if you look at the box, even without opening it, the box is already not sitting flat. This box that's shrink-wrapped already is laying above, you know, it's not even resting flat while it's still in shrink. So I don't even know what that's all about. That bugs the snot out of me even before I open the box now. Because I'm like, if nothing, if everything already doesn't fit in here with the box lid shut, why not just make a bigger box? Now I know someone from Roxley would probably be like, well, we did it that way so that we could use the same box size that we did for the regular version of the game as we did for the deluxe size. But the downside of that is it's not like they're using the same box as they are like I can hurt well let's let me let's oh let's crack the the shrink wrap so I can show you without the glare on the shrink wrap so for those of you who don't know Brass Lancashire is a game from Roxy Games that's designed by Martin Wallace so all right, so here's, oh, that actually smells really nice. I don't know what it is about board games and smells and like role-playing games and like collectible card games. They all have like very vivid smells. And this one does too. So if we get back all up in the camera again, you can see that there is actually gold foil on in the deluxe version here. Anytime they talk about brass, or is it brass foil? Is it brass foil? Or is it, I, it looks more gold. This does not look like brass to me, which to me would be like an, a duh, right? If you're gonna make a deluxe version of a game called brass, wouldn't you use brass foil instead of gold foil? I mean, it looks nice. I'm not gonna complain one way or another. But like, look at this box art. It's so cool. I mean, this is, the box art is the same between the regular version and the deluxe version. The only big difference that I can tell is that I believe it's white font that they or white colored font that they use for the regular game instead of the deluxe version. But that's just so cool. And it just looks like like this game on a shelf just looks like hey, pick me up and play because it just draws you in. It's got that eye candy, you know? That that it's just got that eye candy appeal. So, we've spent enough time on the box lid let's all right so you can see we go back to seeing that the game board is not even sitting flat on <laughs> not even sitting flat there so let's look inside and see what's causing us to be 
Is that a riser? I just see like there's card random cardboard bits shoved in there. That's weird. All right, so of course we've got the rule book first laying on top here. Got your components list and the rule book. They didn't skimp on the artwork on the rule book. Looks nice. So we got, ooh, historical figures and industrial revolution information. So this is, you know, if you want to know more about the time period that's set in and we start getting into the actual rules that I'll have to probably watch a video for because I don't know if I want to read through that. I, I'm just being honest. Just typically that's how I do things. All right, next is the game board. So this is what's next on the list here. We got a nice quad fold game board here. It's double-sided. Did not know that. It's a double-sided board. And so we got one side here that's upside down. All right, this side has, let's see, does this one have? All right, so this side here says Lancashire, 1770 to 1870. First of all, was the game always set in Lancashire? Don't know this, because I know I'm probably saying that incorrectly. It looks like Lancashire, and I know that's not right. I'm sure someone's gonna pronounce, uh, correct me on my pronunciation. I'm pretty sure it's Lancashire, maybe? Anyways, so this is one side of the board. Uh, this one says Lancashire 1770 to 1870, but I believe that's what the back side says too. So is it the same board? Okay, so it looks very similar, but the gameplay mechanics on it, or the, the, the spots where you can do different actions are different. So it's not the, exactly the same. Aesthetically, it is the same picture, the same city but there are different spaces on here. So that, that's, that's good. Gives you some uh, variability between different times you play. So there's our game board. All right, now we've actually gotten to the flat part of the box. Like, you know, we, you, you know, the box at this point is now flat, aside from this cardboard spacer that's holding up something wrapped. That's weird. Oh, it's holding up the next piece. All right, so now we have, oh, here we go. Uh, shrink wrap components. So let's break into this here. There we go. And I'm already popping piece, pieces out. Uh, so like I said, I never played the original version of Brass, so I don't know what is and isn't everything is, but we've got a bunch of ships. We got a bunch of ships here that are falling off. I hope I don't lose these, because that would be a waste. Uh, and then these look like player pieces. Because we've got buildings, we've got ships, we got a little character that are double-sided because there's a male and a female. That's good. So, yeah, all sorts. Oh, one side, this looks like ships, and on the flip side, they look like trains, I think. Those look kind of like ships. It's kind of weird the way they depict the ship on there. It's got like a little, looks like a rail, like almost it's in a, like a canal sort of thing, but you got uh, kind of bluish gray, uh, purple, uh, like a burgundy, and then yellow. I like the color palette. It's not, it's, it's different, but nice at the same time. All right, let's, let's put some of those pieces in there. Then we got, uh, ooh. Just cut that so I don't rip something. Uh, one thing I do like, like, you know, it's not just that. This could have just completely been black, but they got that little flare, like, psh, little fire flare on there. And it's on that way on the lid, too. 
Didn't need to be there, but it's a nice little touch. It's kind of neat. And there are four of these as well. These look like some sort of player board. So that's what I'm guessing by this. Some sort of player aid player board thing. What's up? You want to play brass? What do you think? You don't know? No. Love? He wants loves. All right. And we have a white sheet of paper. That's nice because, you know, I totally needed a uh, white sheet of paper. Uh, there we go. Ooh. I do always like it when a game brings in baggies because, A, if I don't use them, then I could put them in my growing pile of other baggies for when games don't have them. And B, if I do use them, then I don't have to pull from that pile of bags and I can save them for like a fantasy flight game or something. Uh, more cardboard spaces. Okay, so the good news is, is that there's a lot of air in here. So by the time that I unwrap everything, it may all fit in the base box with the lid closed. So I'm okay with that, I think. I know I... I know I moaned about it, the, the lid not sitting flat. But it looks like it may all, like there's a whole, there's a whole, let me just flip this up here. There's a lot of empty space in here. We got all the bit, we got bits here. We got a lot of empty space in there and stuff's falling out. Uh, I, I think this, I think this will all fit in, inside with the, the box lid closed. Now, I'm going to save the middle bit that you just saw for last because I think, if that's what I think it is, I can't wait, but I'm, I want to get, we're going to save the best for last. So, we got a deck of cards here. Let's get that open. All right. Uh, same kind of artwork, but this looks like you got other plays because there's a Lancaster, Lancashire, no, Lancaster. Oh, that's different. Uh, Barrow and Furnace. I don't know what these mean. These are just different cards and it's kind of very, got definitely the industrial motif down. This goes to show you can have a boring theme like the Industrial Revolution and still make your game look pretty. Like, just because the game has a theme that may not be completely out the wazoo different, doesn't mean you can't, it doesn't have to be just drab. You can have good looking artwork that still matches your theme even if your theme isn't as inspiring as say like rising sun or you know something completely different uh we got these look like player aid cards they got like card distributions of all the different cards uh there's a, on the back there's rules uh perform two actions in turn order refill hand to eight determine new turn order gain income that doesn't sound that bad I don't know. I, I'm getting excited about a Euro game. What is going on here? Uh, got your cardboard bits. We got black cubes and we got uh, orange cubes. Kind of hoping the black cubes are coal. I don't know, but I'm kind of hoping they are because that would be thematic. We got the colored cube or colored markers for probably one's victory points and one's like where you're actually going. They're somewhat the same color as the boards. And then that just leaves this Mamma Jamma. This right here is probably what you're paying for the most when you get the deluxe version. I don't know what the base box comes with. And to be honest, I'm kind of glad that I do have this now because I played uh, Founders of Gloomhaven. We, we brought out one night and a friend of mine had the deluxe version of uh, brass that he had kickstarted, and he brought out these. These are the Iron Clay's uh, poker chips that you get, I believe, only in the deluxe version or in the Kickstarter, or you may be able to buy them separately. But holy crap, these things are gorgeous. And we played like that made half the game right there when we were playing the Founders of Gloomhaven was just messing around with the clay chips now i mean it didn't really affect the gameplay it just like i still like the game even without the chips but it is kind of nice to be sitting there and like can, as someone that gets very distracted it has like what's the right word 
I have to fidget. I fidget a lot. That's the word I'm looking for. So having something really tactile like these chips, these poker chips, and being able to, like, while it's not my turn, just sit here and kind of clank my chips together, it's very appealing for someone like me. So, in fact, I may just stop the rest of this video and just sit here and play with these chips. So, we got the, we got the ones. Oh, Oscar's interested now. Let's put one on his head. Nope. Oh, can we balance you one on your head? Boop. You like that? He like, yeah, he likes that. Let's put, nope. So, get some more. No, you want the chip back? Oh, he likes the scratches. There we go. So Oscar approves of the iron clays. Yeah, I think you got hair in my mouth. So now we have the fives. So that was the ones that we, you saw before. Which is weird because there's more chips than there is space. I don't know if that's something about the chips or what. I don't know enough about. So next we got the fives here. We get five token. And then we have the 10 and 20 here. Let's pop this sucker open. Yep. Got one on Oscar. All right, we got the five, the 10, and the 20 here. Same style, again, Oscar likes the rubs. They feel great on Oscar. He loves that. And of course, like I said, it's just, it feels so good. I can just sit here and play. Like Oscar, me and you are just gonna sit here and clink chips the rest of this video. Just clink chips. It's so good. Anyways, so this mess that's now on my table is the deluxe version of Brass Lancashire. Um, even if you get just the basic version, I think like all the artwork's the same. Uh, you may not get the chips, but to be fair, if you want to make your game a deluxe version, I got these chips from Walmart for like $10. So, like, if you can't get, or if you don't have the money, um, I have to look and see what the difference price-wise was between the deluxe version and the basic version. But, I mean, you're getting what you're paying for, but if you still want that feel of the nice chips you can't go that wrong with just getting like some, like, like I said, all of these chips were like $10. I want to say these iron clays go for like 25 by themselves. Could be wrong on that. But I mean, like, yes, they're not graphically the same, but when in a pinch, they'll feel the same. You know, you still get that nice. In fact, I bought these after I played with the iron clays so that for other games, I could still get that feeling. Yeah. So there you go. Like I said, if you case you still want that kind of deluxe feeling without the deluxe cost, then you can't go wrong with, you know, just some Walmart poker chips. Just make sure you get clays. Don't get the plastic chips. That is bad. That is bad. Do not do that. Don't get plastic chips. You gotta at least get the clay chips. Cause then you're then that's 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 where you know you're on. In fact, I think I got more I think I got more in the Walmart ones than I did in the iron clays. These are good. I'm not downplaying them. These are gorgeous. But you get what you pay for. So you paid a lot to get good looking chips. So there you go. That is the deluxe version of Brass Lancashire. Um, if you like this video, if you like these kind of unboxings, I'd like to kind of do more of these, especially Oscar. Oscar's always up for recording videos, aren't you, dude? Let me know down in the comments below if you like this video, what you think of Blast, Brass Lancashire. How did I, did I pronounce it right? Is it Lancashire? Let me know in the comments below. Also, make sure 
wherever I put it over there. Make sure you follow us on the different social media networks and go check out boardsandswords.com for other great content. In the meantime, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Wave bye. Bye. Boop. 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 He's waving bye. Nope, he's not. <laughs>